Hey everybody, John Lorden here with another episode of Brain Scratch Searchlight. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Um, you know, one of the stories that we frequently hear on these cases is when parents have a child go missing. And those cases can be extremely nerve wracking because, um, you know, a child only has so many resources, so many ways to defend themselves or take care of themselves if they are away from home. But I want to flip that on today's episode. And I want you to think about what if your parent went missing? Because that's what we're looking into today with the case of Kelvin Andrew Close. Uh, let me go ahead and bring up an image of him here so you can see Kelvin. He has a daughter. Um, she's working very hard. I can see that she's popping up uh, in media several times trying to raise awareness to the, this case. Um, he also has a son, I believe. Uh, and it's just, it's a heart wrenching story. Unfortunately, there's not a ton of detail out there. This isn't a story that has really hit kind of national exposure level. It's gotten some local press. Um, and we're going to cover that and see if we can kind of make some sense of, out of it. There's a few facts that are kind of key that um, I'm seeing misreported or reported in two different ways. So, of course, I'm going to cover those with you. But um, the basics of the story are this guy was driving to a doctor's appointment and got lost, um, called his family. His family got him kind of close to home, uh, but then he got lost again. And then next thing you know, his cell phone has been shut off. His credit cards aren't being used. Uh, him and his car are missing. So let's see if there's something we can do to hopefully bring this family back together. Uh, Kelvin Close, missing since September 13th, 2017. That's right. It's coming up on two months that he has been missing now. Of course, um, we have some cause for concern here about his safety um, and, and his well-being. Uh, age missing. This is reporting it at 65 years. According to some of the other articles I've seen, he's 66. Um, it looks like his birthday is also coming up. So he's either 65 turning 66 or 66 turning 67 later this week. Uh, he is a white male with gray hair, brown eyes. He is five foot seven inches tall, and his weight is around 150 pounds, missing from Fort Myers, Florida, in Lee County. Um, and here is, let's just go over this narrative here and we'll, we'll update it as we get to the news stories. But a Florida silver alert has been issued for Kelvin Close, last seen in the area of the 15000th block of Sonoma Drive in Fort Myers. I believe that is the block that he actually lives on. Um, he was wearing a blue polo shirt and khaki shorts. He has a horseshoe shaped scar on his nose and you can tell, and this is a driver's license photo on the left and you know, most of us don't have great driver's license photos, but you can tell they've got some really good detail on that horse shape um, type scar that is on his nose there. So certainly get that from here, but look at the picture over on the right. Um, this looks like almost a very different type of man. So just try to absorb these images the best you can. Um, and if you see anyone that looks like either of these guys, please contact the authorities. Of course, I will have contact information in the description box below. Uh, he may be traveling in a 2017 beige Honda Accord. Now, we get to another discrepancy here. They're saying that it's beige. According to several of the articles and some information I've seen posted on Facebook from his family, they're describing it as gold. Now, I've looked into Honda Accords for 2017. There seems to be a color that is, I think it's called champagne, which some people might say looks like beige, like kind of a sparkly type of beige, but they have another one that is straight up gold. It's actually called uh, Mandarin gold, if I remember correctly. Let me uh, bring up that photo for you guys real quick. So here is a photo of the color that is known as Mandarin gold. Um, this one here is a little bit more uh, in that champagne kind of beigey color. So I'm not certain at this point uh, which color is correct, but I do see it more reported as gold. This is a very strong type of gold. Um, so I think it's probably most likely the gold color. Uh, I don't know that I would consider this kind of champagne beige gold. Um, maybe, you know, I, I did find a phone number uh, for his daughter. 
I didn't want to contact her directly because you never know um, how families are going to respond to this type of attention. Some of them uh, hopefully appreciate it. We know that many of them appreciate it, but because of that, I didn't feel very comfortable reaching out to her. However, Alexis, if you see this um, and you want to get in touch with me to help me clarify some of this stuff, I can certainly do an update on this video. I'm just trying to get as close to the truth as we can. And we've got several um, different things kind of happening in what's being reported on this case. So Alexis, if you want to get in touch with me, you can email me at john, J-O-H-N, at lordandarts dot com lord and arts just like the channel name you see down below um, and i will certainly get back to you and let me just extend the offer at this point if you do want to be interviewed for this channel so we can raise exposure using this amazing crowd of people that i have following this channel um, please feel free and we can totally line that up but Back to the case. So um, we've either got a beige or a gold Honda Accord with Florida tag number Y14PGF. And it said he may be traveling in the Punta Gorda, Florida area. I think they believe that because of uh, kind of the path that his car was taking on Interstate 75 heading north, trying to get him home. Uh, here we have a picture of him with his daughter, Alexis. And I just have to say from the quotes that I've seen uh, online and footage that I've seen of her, this young girl is... She's showing all the things that we see in these cases when it comes to a very caring family member that will not let go of hope. Um, she is keeping her faith out there and she is doing everything she can to find her father. She's out there putting up posters. She's doing all the interviews. Um, my, my heart goes out to her and her brother uh, for facing this. This is just a really troubling case. Let's learn a little bit more about Fort Myers, Florida. Uh, Fort Myers has grown rapidly in recent years. As of the 2010 census, the city population was just over 62,000. And then in 2016, it was estimated at over 77,000. So certainly some crazy growth going on there. Uh, Fort Myers is a gateway to the Southwest Florida region and a major tourist destination within Florida. Um, you can see here on the map, it's kind of on the west side of uh, the peninsula as it, as it juts out there. So just so you have some idea about where we're talking about. Over at ncmissingpersons.org, we see another profile, um, two more photos um, that I, I believe these probably look more like you would see him. I'm telling you, driver's license photos are usually terrible um, for you know trying to find people. So I think these photos might be better indicators of what he is actually looking at, uh, looking like now. Let me go ahead and increase the size on that for you guys a little bit. Uh, same information, except here we get his age at disappearance um, at being 66. They note his date of birth is November 10th, 1951. So um, that is coming up at the, the end of this week. And I don't know, it just, it makes it even more troubling. And I'm hoping that someone out there watching this video might have information to help this family. So maybe they could even celebrate their father's birthday with him. Um, brown eyes, gray hair, um, also mentions the horseshoe scar on his nose, which these photos really don't show it um, quite as strongly as the driver's license photo. Uh, and then on the details, they say on the way to an appointment near his home, he contacted his family 40 minutes after he left from Naples, Florida. Um, now, that's worded kind of badly, according to the other information I'm reading. He was lost, and he called them from Naples, Florida. From what I understand, there was no reason for him to even be that far south. Um, his doctor's office is only about four miles away from his home in Fort Myers. So he got lost, I believe, took the freeway, went way too far south, called his family. They then helped get him back on the freeway, get him going in the right direction. But I believe he didn't take the exit for his home, and then he continued going north. Um, his last call to them was from the LaBelle exit. Um, I'm not exactly sure. I've heard that referred to a couple times, and unfortunately, I'm just not that familiar with this part of Florida. But I can tell you the Daniels Parkway exit is the one that he probably should have taken for where he lives. And if you're wondering why I've got two apartments um, kind of highlighted out here, we'll talk about that in a minute. But this is the exit. 131 is the exit that I've seen noted several times where that's kind of the last time um, they had spoken to him. However, 
The ping information does show that um, he might have continued north as far as this place called Tucker's Grade, which is up at an exit close to 158. Uh, and of course, just outside of Punta Gorda, which is why they mentioned that um, previously. So, but what is going on with these two things? That's another thing in this story that I can't get straight. He either lives at Horizons Apartments or he lived at the Palms of Monterey Apartments. I've seen it reported both ways by the same news source, which I've never quite seen before. Um, I've, I've definitely seen conflicting information from different news sources, but same source, two different reports, two different locations for where his home was. But regardless, um, we can see that it it is in this general area uh, right off of Daniels Parkway. So... Let's continue heading over to Fox 4, which has been doing some really good coverage on this. I really appreciate that they're getting airtime and giving it to this case um, and uh, letting Alexis on the air to talk about her thoughts and feelings about all this. Here, they mentioned the first address, which I'm not sure which is right. And here they also mentioned that he's driving a gold Honda sedan, once again with Florida license plate Y14PGF. Uh, if we jump over to this other article that came out, I think just about 10 or 11 days later, they say that his home was actually the Palms of Monterey in Fort Myers. Um, that's why we have this. I've got them both listed, but one of them's right and one of them probably isn't. I guess there's even a slim chance they're both wrong, but uh, perhaps Alexis will clear that up for us. Um it's talking about his doctor's appointment being four miles away. Uh, 40 minutes later, he called his family saying he was lost in Naples. They got him back to the I-75. Um, and then he called his family again after he passed his exit. And that was the last time that they heard from him. His daughter, Alexis Close, says the last location the Lee County Sheriff's Office was able to ping his cell phone off was Tucker's Grade in Charlotte County. And that's that other section on the map I showed you that is way too far north. Since then, his phone is off, no credit card activity, no mobile phone activity, no sightings, Alexis said. Now, what is going on with him? You know, 67 isn't exactly, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's getting up there in years, but for a lot of people, uh, that's not necessarily enough for them to start having accidents like this or getting lost in this way. Unfortunately, uh, here we see the story that three years ago, he fell and he hit his head and he suffered a brain bleed. Alexis said ever since he's been forgetful and he gets easily lost. She's afraid someone took advantage of her father's friendliness or the fact that he had cash and a new car. And I certainly echo those concerns. I'm afraid of something along those lines as well. Um, cause there's just not a whole lot of other things that we could consider when we're looking at a case like this. One thing I was looking at is on this path. Um, I, I hate to put this out there, but we have to consider this, um, because I've seen these cases before. And when you have a car that goes missing with a person sometimes, and I'm not saying all the time or even the majority of the time, but sometimes we do learn that the car wound up in a body of water. Um, I know this place was hit by Hurricane Irma. I know that their water levels are a bit higher than usual. Um, what I'm not sure of is this path that he's driving on. Um, is there a lot of people around here? Would someone have missed a car going into some type of source of water uh, in the middle of the day like that? I really don't know. I just, I'm not familiar enough with this area, um, but I'm hoping that the authorities are at least considering that, possibly looking at the path that he was going on and just taking a look at these, at these water areas. I would hate to think that that is the outcome of this story, but I just want to put it out there because it needs to be looked at. We do see some cases where bodies of water hide a vehicle and a person. Jumping over to NBC2.com, um, I just want to share a little more insight that we get from his family. In terms of the facts of this case, that's really all we know. This is such a mystery because we have him driving. We have a little bit of a trail where we can tell he was going, but then all of a sudden that trail stops and we really don't have any leads to go further than that. So here I just want to show you an example of this amazing hope and faith that his daughter is keeping up. Quote, I don't care about the circumstances. 
I know that after he's with us again, we can nurse him back to health, and that's all I want. I just want to bring him home, said Alexis Close, Kelvin's daughter. Uh, this article at NBC2 also quotes someone at the Q Center for Missing, per- missing Persons, and they're talking about the fact that when someone goes missing, there's no guidebook, there's no rules, there's no playbook. And I saw, I certainly saw that gap as well. So once again, Alexis or Zach, if you guys are watching this, check the description box below. I have a link down there to a page at brainscratchers.com where I have put together missing person tips. There's a couple videos. It's also written out in text if you don't want to watch the videos. I've compiled it from several sources about what you guys can be doing to try to help find your father. Um, some of these things might just jar or or move you in in a new direction. I think it's just worth considering. I hope you guys will check that link, go to that page, see the information and see if uh, maybe there's something in it to help you guys continue your search for him uh, in maybe a little bit of a different way than you have been so far. From what I can see, there is no GoFundMe going on for this currently. Um, I was hoping there might be one because I would certainly donate to it if there was. Maybe that's something that they're considering. Um, Outside of that, jumping back over to fox4now.com and another article, um, just a little bit more of Alexis speaking here, quote, it's a pretty big hole in our family without him around. Her and her brother, Zach, began searching for him and are now putting flyers all around Southwest Florida with pictures of his face and car, hoping for some answers. There's no reason for me to stop. There's no reason for me to give up. There's no reason for me to start thinking the worst. You're absolutely right, Alexis, there isn't. And I'm glad to hear that you're in this mode. Um, Just realize that this is a process. This is something that might go on for an extended period of time. So please do your best to take care of yourself while you're taking these steps and making sure that everything is progressing in terms of trying to find your father. One of the other things I noticed about this is I don't believe he has a name as profile currently. Um, And I wanna make sure that happens. So. I am going to go ahead and do an entry for that. Um, I might even shoot a video on it just to kind of talk to you guys and show you how easy it is for anyone out there to get an account on NamUs. Um, go ahead and put your own missing person in there. I think it's really important in this case because he was in a vehicle. We know that he was lost. We know that he drove considerable distance while being lost there's even a possibility that he might not be in the state anymore. Um, You know, if he kept going for some reason, he might be out, certainly out of the county where they're expecting to find him. Um, And that's part of the importance of having him in NamUs. Sometimes if he gets into a different jurisdiction, uh, you might have a police department that has only part of the clue, maybe a sighting of his car, but they don't have a record to tie that back to. That's part of what's great about NamUs is it's a centralized data area where law enforcement from all kinds of different places can look and see if there is this person missing. So it's really important that one way or another, we get him entered into NamUs. And I'm going to go ahead and Uh, try to take care of that myself um, for you guys. But um, we'll see. It might already be um, being handled by law enforcement. Sometimes NamUs won't post the profile publicly until there's enough information there. So it could be that there's already a profile started. But either way, I'm going to try to start another one uh, just to get Kelvin um, on there. Uh, Here is the Facebook page that has been put together, I believe, by the family, Bring Kelvin Home. And you can see a poster they put together here. There is a shot of his car, but I can't really tell um, from this picture, once again, about the color of the car. I'm kind of stuck. It could be that champagne color. It could be the Mandarin gold color. I'm really not certain. But they reported as of just about four days ago, he is still indeed missing and they're looking for help. There is also a very small web sleuths thread on this, um, but it does have links to several news articles. So I wanted to call it out. Um, It's a good source for anyone that is looking into this case, but... That's it, Brain Scratchers. Here's where I turn it over to you. If you have friends in that area, please share this video with them. Please raise exposure. We want to get this man's face seen by as many people as possible. We want him to share his next birthday with his family. We want his family to know that he is safe uh, or to know what happened to him, whatever. We just need to get them that information. So if you think you have part of 
this mystery solved and you want to forward that information, once again, check the description box below. I'll have all the pertinent contact information down there so you can use that and hopefully bring this family um, back together and bring Kelvin home. That's, that's the best thing that can happen in this case right now. So thank each and every one of you for being part of this. I can't do it without you guys. Um, I really appreciate all your support in these cases. And let's see if there's something we can do to help with this one too. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you back here tomorrow on the Lord and Arts channel. <laughs>